Welcome to episode 18 of Human Factors Cast. This is our first episode since the U.S. election, and it's on everybody's mind, so we would be remiss if we didn't address it, at least in some manner. No matter which side you fall on, it's been tiring. Uh, you know, we all have our own beliefs, but our official position on Human Factors Cast is to do your research. We are a research-based podcast. We are a science-based podcast, and make decisions based on those research. No matter which side you fall on, the fight isn't over. Keep fighting for what you believe in. Today we're talking about usability methods, metrics, and much, much more. Stay tuned. Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome, joined today by Mr. Billy Hope. Hey, guys. How's it going? And again, Mr. Blake Arnsdorf. What's up, homies? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Are you alive? Are you what, here? What a week. What a week it has been. <laughs> and it's only Monday. It, oh, oh, it is only Monday. only Monday. <laughs> yeah, we had the election. Mm -hmm. um, yep, yep, We yep. had the appendectomy. Yes, um, the, uh, is that how we're going to refer to it as? <laughs> the at appendectomy? Yeah, so uh, yeah, so I had an appendectomy. Yeah, uh, yeah, That yeah. was scary. That um, freaked me out for sure, oh, seeing man. that on Slack. Well, yeah, like like uh, we we usually record our shows on Mondays, and I sent you guys a message. I was like, hey, guys, uh, can't can't come in <laughs> this Monday. Uh, I, I'm going under surgery. Like the, the thing that was crazy to me was the onset. Like it was Thursday afternoon, and I started feeling pain in my stomach, and I thought it was like, I thought it was like indigestion or right, something. Right, right. And then like Friday came along and, and I was like, oh boy, this is a little bit more serious than indigestion. Like, is this constipation? Like, what is, like, what is it? It was just uh -oh. a really, really uncomfortable feeling in my stomach, you know, and like to the point where I was Googling stomach issues at oh, work. Dude, that's and oh, then, that's like, the word. And then, Fall down that rabbit hole. <laughs> freak yourself it was out. cancer, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it must be. And then, uh, you know, like by the end of the night, like I just couldn't sleep on Friday night. And right. so, so yeah, I, I was in the ER by the next. I was in the ER by Saturday at like eleven. It was yeah. it was just crazy how quickly it came. Whoa. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Now you were you were messed up. But I mean, like all this gave me some perspective. While I was in that hospital bed, I like could not stand the human factors bit of it. Uh, oh, or being in a hospital? Yeah. Oh, the problems are nuts. Aren't oh they? my gosh, the, the human factors of healthcare. Like that's Ooh. that's so many episodes wrapped up in that like neat little bucket. Well, like, just give me a couple of the base points. Like, okay. what's the problem? So I got I got surgery on my appendix, and so like my side was killing me, and so like uh -huh. to to roll either to the left or to the right, it was almost impossible for me to press the buttons that are located. I mean, to move the bed. To come to to be comfortable, right? Like, right. I mean, it's it's an impossible situation because you put it too low, you're going to accidentally bump it. You put it too high, and you know you won't be able to reach it. So it's in this awkward position where you still have to strain yourself to press the button to get more comfort. It's that's just one example, but I mean, like we we definitely should do a whole episode on the human factors of well, healthcare. Well, I came and visited you, and you actually did well. You did say that there was a. It was really hard to move around and do anything about <laughs> yes. it. I was sitting in that room. I mean, like, it's the little things that I noticed, too. Like, for example, the food tray thing doesn't quite fit no matter how you're positioned in the bed. Yeah. It always seems like it's awkward going over you, and you're just going to spill all over yourself. And that's yeah. really weird because, like, uh, I was helping Elise put lectures together. Yeah. And it's all about, like, the top of what we're going over today. But the FDA has really extensive guidelines for usability tests. Right. Really? Yeah, I couldn't believe that because I mean I was in like a hospital for a couple of weeks over the not too long ago when my grandma was in the ICU, right? And same right. thing. I was like, "What is going on in this place?" Right? Yeah, well, it's like it feels like a no-brainer. Well, it also it, we talked about this before with the idea of um, oh crud! I remember the episode we were talking about different types of people using different things, weight, size, things like that. What was the episode? Uh, probably That's biomechanics. Right? Biomechanics. Yeah. We were talking about biomechanics, and it, I would figure biomechanics would go a lot into oh, hospitals. hugely, hugely. So I mean, that must be really hard to deal with because you're not only talking about the size, the weight, and the condition of the person, but you're also talking about what they just went through with medically. 
Yeah, yeah. you got to d- design something that's agnostic to all that, right? Like, yeah, you know, that's like a whole another all... fifth thing. Hey, guys, doctor says no more than 20 pounds, so you're going to have to help me haul all the podcast gear into my car tonight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so uh, I got a surprise for us. Ooh, Ooh I'm surpri- excited. Surprises. I didn't tell you guys about this. No. Um, we had somebody write in. Uh-huh. Um, Actually, just moments ago, uh, sometime between when the uh, show notes were printed out uh-huh. and uh, with the time that we started recording. So I'm going to. Oh. oh, I know. Yeah. So y- y- whoever you are, it's it's uh, it's labeled a non e mouse. So. Oh, that's cute. Uh, so whoever you are, you made the deadline just like barely. Is it a uh, Nigerian prince? Uh, no, no, they are not asking for money. Uh, I just want to read this email, though, because it's, it's a great email. All and right. uh, I thought maybe it would spark a little discussion. And it's kind of a segue from last week's discussion into this week's discussion. Okay. Uh, hey, guys, I just listened to your show on video game design, which was last week. Um, you guys did a great job talking about some of the things we consider when designing our games. I work at what some would consider a AAA studio. Mm. And while I can't Secret. tell you, I, while I can't tell you what title I'm working on, I'd like to share a neat anecdote about another time Human Factors came into the develop of one of our current titles we're working on. Is this real? This is. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, that's really yeah. cool. Um, yeah, we're making progress. <laughs> we, we were recently discussing preloading the game and which parts of the game we should make playable first while the game loads onto the user's uh-huh. device. Right. Uh, we ended up making the character creation screen the first playable portion is the game of the game as most users will spend a lot of time creating their character as the game loads. Ooh, I just, that's interesting. I just thought this was a neat little story, and I thought I would share with you guys. Thanks for everything, Anon Y Mouse. Aw, that's that a cool name. That is really cool. That's cool, and yeah. The, and my mind's racing through. It's like, what game were they talking about? Right, I know, AAA title. Well, While the game is loading. Myself, like, what, <laughs> what's that? I had just gone through this like a couple days ago when Call of Duty came out, because it's such a big like file or whatever, and it doesn't let you choose what downloads first. Right. right. And I was like, if only they would let you pick what preloads, because all I want to do is play multiplayer. I didn't right. care about anything else. It's like, yeah, you don't want single player. You just want to jump right in, right? Yeah. yeah that's so a really cool thing to bring up. I thought that was really neat. That's something that I didn't even ever consider. Star Wars did the same thing, Battlefront. They, they did They did something similar. It was like a... Um, you got to play as Darth Vader while the game was loading, yeah, just, and you, just would mowing. Get, you would get to be able to mow down a bunch of rebels and things like that. Only problem is... Is it was like impossible to die almost. It was it wasn't like it was like to get you acquainted with the game's mechanics, which was kinda cool, but like it was it got boring after a couple minutes. But, yeah, yeah, I mean you stop uh, at first I thought it would help with ranking or something like that. But you know, something along those lines is a great idea while the game loads. Well serious props to Nani Mouse and yeah. whatever studio Mis- she's working at. Mr. Mouse, thank you for writing in. That was phenomenal. If you guys have stories like Mr. Mouse does, um <laughs> <laughs> this sounds so funny. <laughs> if you guys have stories like Mr. Mouse does, please, please email us. Um, we record on Monday nights, so if you want, you, you know, last week's show, something that just resonates with you or whatever. If you have questions, comments, whatever, we'll we'll read it on the show. This was really cool. Yeah, um, Billy, what are we talking about today? Let's today to we are going to be talking about method, metrics, and more. Ooh. Yeah, I'm excited about this one. I kind of like this sort of stuff. Right. Yeah. No. There's there's definitely a lot of um, this is this is a uh, aside from VR. This is like one of my favorite topics as well. Yeah. 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 No, I I like the idea of how how everything's organized and filed away and things like that. I'm a messy person, but I do like the idea of making things ordered and clean. This is where it gets real fun because this is where we get to measure what we're trying to do. Oh, yeah. It's just the best. <laughs> Super cool. See, you guys get really excited about this. So uh, so let's start at the beginning. What is usability? What is methodology? And what is usability testing methodology? Right. So usability is um, basically what we talk about in the show, Billy. Have uh-huh. you been paying attention these last couple episodes? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you asking <laughs> questions? Oh, no, man. No. <laughs> there goes my PhD in the mail. <laughs> no, u- usability. Uh, no, it's it's something making something easier for the human to right. use. Um, and, and your question about methodology, I think the best way to answer that is how you go about doing something. Mm-hmm. So we talked about this when we were doing things like mobile app reviews and things like that. How yes. you go about getting to this. To right. That, yeah. No, we, we've definitely pathway. we've definitely touched on this before. Mm-hmm. Uh, this will be. Mm, this will be good. Uh, and then usability testing methodology. Mm-hmm. That is uh, how you go about testing your users or evaluating them or um, insert 
other word here, them. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I mean, this has been really interesting, and I'm sure this will probably resonate a little bit with you, Nick, too. Like, when you go from working in a lab where you have a lot of control and you can test them and oh, you're yeah. actually, you know, watching users and directing them through tasks to, like, in the real world where it's, okay, no more computer, you don't really have any time, do it on a piece of paper. Right, yeah. The, yeah, it's it's so different. The The difference between lab settings and industry is just night and day you know at my job we uh they do a lot of uh testing and app testing and things like that and they always do it through post-it notes it seems like post-it notes are everywhere yep. oh that's the big we'll, thing for we'll, sure we'll oh, talk yeah. about that we'll okay. talk about that okay okay all right so uh we have uh curated a list of usability testing methods i think we should just go through them all right all right let's what's up first them. uh card sorting card sorting mm -hmm. okay uh, Blake, have you ever done card sorting? You know, I've done it like from a architecture or like an information architecture standpoint, right? So, what a co what card? Wait, wait, wait! Slow down for a minute. There, what is information architecture? So that's just trying to design like the how information is going to be presented to people in what order. It's kind oh, of right. Yeah. It's almost design like if you think of it from like designing a home page, like what are people going to see when they land on that page? And so then when you dig think down about deep. like think about the 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 way an architect designs a house. Uh-huh. They the frame? they do the they do the floor plan first and like like where people like you're going to put the kitchen probably next to the living room and mm -hmm. not the bathroom because right. that's Who just smells. Right. <laughs> so you're going to put it in a social space, right? Right. Um it's just those kind of decisions, but when it comes to usability, you're going to, you're going to, you know, put these things that would probably tie together in around this same area of the website or, or whatever you're working on on the program or, you know, we've talked is. about this a little bit, but little we've bit. never really gotten into it. We should yeah. do a show on that. Ooh. So each one of these could be a show. So just, it's just kind of like a tutorial in a video game. How it's prevented, how the game going to play out to the user. Well, see, I think of like card sorting is way super low level. Like there's no, there's nothing really on top of it. It's trying to define what that might look like and what information is going to be sorted into that category. Oh shoot! Did I say card sorting? I meant, I meant information architecture. That's no, what, that's, that's information <laughs> architecture. But we're talking about card sorting. Yes. Right, no. right, right. Wow. I'm sorry. I was going appendectomy, guys. Appendectomy. Oh yeah. <laughs> how long are you going to use that excuse? Uh, as long as the Percocet is still... <laughs> oh. Percocet! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so card sorting, though. Yes. Okay. Blake, you were going. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. You're all good. So, I mean, card sorting is just useful for how you categorize what information you're going to see. And it's a lot of times we'll see it in websites and stuff like that. But, I mean, you can use it to really define anything from video game structure to... I don't know how you want to organize your kitchen sink. Well, yeah, I mean, so card sorting... What does that sound like to you? Well, to me, it sounds like when you have to do a speech and you have to have your little note cards and you put them in order and you go from one note card to the other note card to present information. Right. And and hold for, the card so, that says hold for applause and just breathe. So, yeah, card sorting is like putting those concepts like like if you were to put a, a couple different things, right? Like um, I, I let's say know. I was making an online resume website. How would I use card sorting to do that? OK, uh. I've never made an online resume <laughs> website. But I mean like just but, a thing about me. But what I would what I would deduce is I would give you a set of cards that says like um you know okay so I am going to give you these cards with these words on them mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you like four buckets. Right. Now I want you to put these cards in these buckets where they belong like resume, career center, um you know, professionals, extra uh, skills, skills like, like, and then the buckets would be something like resume, and then like, uh, like experience, experience. You know, it's it's just curriculars awards. I'm looking at it like kind of like how, from what I'm gathering from you guys, it's almost like a website. Like when you first go to the website, there's a picture of me and like a little bio. If I was making a website about you know Billy. You know, there. And then you would tell me, okay, what's going to be on the next page? And that's how you would do card sorting. You would collect all the information in a general area. So he here's the way I conceptualize it, right? You have, like, okay, so you're designing a website. And you want to have these five things. Mm -hmm. But you're not sure how it should be organized. Because you're, you're not a typical user. Like, let's say right. you're just designing... I don't know, like a food delivery website. All right, food delivery right? website. Okay. And there's five different types of food, but you don't know from the population you're targeting, say it's like, I don't know, people that really like pizza. Uh-huh. Right? 
So you take the you like you take them and let them walk through these five different types of food with like three to five people. And after see, watching them sort these cards into different categories, you can use what they've done to help you design the website itself. Right. Oh, it's kind of mm-hmm. like a straw poll. It's kind of like a poll type of thing. Like, what would be on the front page of it? If, like, kinda. the food delivery website, if you had burgers, pizzas, and tacos, yeah. you would get you would take in a group of people, and you would give them each a card, first, second, or third, what do you prefer? If they all said pizza or burgers, that would be your front page of your website. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're taking kind of what, what people want as a whole and then putting it on the front. Uh, right? Okay. I know it's such a basic concept idea, but it just seems weird in the context of what we're talking about, like designing, you know? Right. I mean? You use it as like a basis for your design. So you just, okay. it's a way of gathering information from your users in a way that like allows them to organize information that makes sense to them. So you want to design around that information. So, uh, but wow, next week on human factors cast, definitely card sorting. <laughs> no, uh, let's talk about design charrettes. Charades? I love charades. Okay, I really want to know what this one is. Yeah. Oh, design charades. You don't are know fun. how charades works. You you pick a word and a phrase, and then you act it out. But you can't talk while you're doing it. Two syllables. Two syllables. First syllable is design. <laughs> design. Second, Second syllable. Second syllable. Sh. Oh, uh, sh. Sh. Sounds oh, wait, like sh. It'd be de- design. <laughs> sh- design. Okay. All right, design charrettes. No, these are cool. So uh, this is when you get like a group of users together and say, uh, or, or it doesn't necessarily have to be users. It could be developers or you know whoever you want to include on this project and say, design what you think this interface would look like. And then... Um, it seems like a terrible idea. It does, uh, yeah. it does, it does, <laughs> it does, it does. Until you realize this is idea generation. This is saying, okay, uh, there's, there's a... Um, <laughs> Yes, exa- well, it's not free because you're paying these people. Oh, um, yeah, but uh, pay this to job. make something. <laughs> no, so so um, so there's a uh, there's a usability guy, Chris Notter. He worked at Microsoft for a while. He uh, teaches classes on Lynda.com. He's made a couple books that I I uh, he's written a couple books that I read. Um, and he uh, kind of he in one of his Lynda classes, he kind of uh, conceptualizes this as as uh, finding the peak on a mountain that you can't so you're climbing up this mountain okay but you can't see the peak above the clouds and you see there's a couple other mountains off in the distance you want to climb the highest mountain right so design charrettes is like exploring all these mountains simultaneously and then you look at them across all of them and then you pick the best one or elements of the other ones to get to that best mountain you get to the highest plateau by picking and choosing elements from all these design charrettes uh, and incorporating it into an interface. And it sounds like patchwork, but if you take just the ideas and and sort of the concepts behind them, you might be able to work them together in a way that's better than any one singular design. Yeah, because that's like not, I don't know, that's an awesome idea, and I'm surprised I'd never really heard of that one because it's it's taking, I guess, like developers or you and I as human factors practitioners away from having to fill the blank page. Right. Well, the way, reason you haven't heard about it is because you're only in the seventh circle of the human factors practitioner. Oh. You, have, you have to be up in the ninth level to be even able to hear about this stuff. Yay, warlock jokes. Um, sorry, no, uh, but seriously, <laughs> uh, so basically it's the same idea of like everybody like like you could do this with colors. Like everybody really responds well to color red on a website, so... In this standpoint, you're going to go with red on that because it has mm-hmm. the mo- generates the most users to click on it. Or something? I I wouldn't use it with color. I'd use it more along the lines of like, uh, this is one way to present information, and then somebody else comes up with a totally different way to present information. Like you might use like a baseball card sort of uh, display where it has you know information about an object and then associated information, or you have that information spread throughout the interface that might give you. Um, it might be better to look at it throughout the interface. Like you don't need it all in one place and the user just needs it at certain times versus all at once. So, um, you know, people would come up with these two separate designs and be like, oh, well, this would be good. Uh, I like this idea. and But I do like elements of this idea. Let's bring uh-huh. that in and kind of okay. mash them all together. So like at the very end of that, after you – I know this is diving really deep on this, but this is super interesting. It's like okay. at, the, at the end of that, do you take everything together and then I guess bring it to a new set of people? You could, yeah, you could evaluate it for sure. Um, is it one of our? You could have them do a cognitive walkthrough. Oh, oh. look what we did there! <laughs> <laughs> wow, these are alphabetical, aren't they? Yep. Okay, and it All gives right. me 
problems with my cruddy jokes. <laughs> All right, so cognitive walkthroughs. Uh, that's exactly what it sounds like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brain walking. Brain, brain walking. Yeah. No, you get the user. Damn okay. fancy brain walking. So we've we've just done design charrettes, and now we come to a user and says, okay, I want you to walk through this interface like you're trying to do task X, where X is whatever you're trying to get them to do. But walk it through with me. Like like verbal, talk, speak aloud, but. You know, like what what are you thinking of while you're going through the steps required to accomplish this task? So a lot of this probably goes into the ideas of UI. Like, for example, you would show somebody the basis of it and say, OK, where do you think you would click to get to more information? Oh, yeah. So you would go maybe to it's always in the left hand corner, those three little lines. You would push on those three little lines and would bring up button. the menu. Hamburger. Hamburger button. Hang- hamburger button. Muffin yeah. button. Muffin button. Oh, you heard it here first. <laughs> Human Factors cast muffin button. <laughs> <laughs> muffin button. Ugh, what does that look like? Is that just like a like a s- It's one little line? line and then one long line and then a couple little lines underneath it. Oh, muffin okay. button. There muffin go. button. Google's going to start using it next year. I just know it. Trademark. Revolutionary. Yep. Uh, contextual task But analysis. is that right? What? Well, like that's the idea. Like you would see where the information is being clicked on and going through. No, you ask you ask the user to tell you what they're thinking as they're as they're looking at as they're evaluating this interface. Oh, okay. So they first see this Billy, interface. Billy, yeah. here's a piece of paper with a design on it. Oh, it goes that basic. Yes. Okay. How, tell me how what button or tell me how you would accomplish this goal. I need you to order a pizza on this website. I drew it up here for you. What okay. button or I guess how would you accomplish a pizza? Uh, I would click on this button that said pizza first, and then it would order take, now. Yeah. Order now, and then go. But if it didn't have that order now button, you'd be like, hmm, I really wish there was an order pizza button. And, oh, yeah. And you would say, and, and then I, as a human factors guy, I would go, that's a great, that's great feedback. I'm going to put an order pizza button right on the front page because that's what you want. Right. Yeah. Can Anyone? I get a job doing this? Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> well, For like- just nineteen ninety nine a month. <laughs> Uh, contextual task analysis. Okay, contextual oh, task analysis. Have you have you done these, Blake? I'm having to do it right now. My new job. <laughs> oh, I love these. Oh, right. Oh, By the way, everybody, congrats on Blake's getting a new job. Oh, I don't know if we can talk about that yet. Okay. Let's, but uh, anyway, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's, let's glance over that. <laughs> yeah, we'll just get out of that one. No, no, no. I started a new job at a startup, and we're having to deal with like five separate like subpopulations of people that all interact together. So we're doing a contextual task analysis now to see how they interact and like watch how that affects everybody in the problem. Task analyses are my favorite thing to do. Oh, like, it's great. Is this kind of like the sharks on the jets duking it out? Or? Billy, sit down at this website and order a pizza. I'm going to sit here and watch. Oh, that is so creepy. I'm going to sit here and watch and see what buttons you press. I'm going to see what you do. I'm a, I'm gonna analyze your every move and write a bunch of notes. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. while you egg. order a pizza. Yeah, it's really cool because you get to interact with these people that are you're potentially gonna solve a really big problem for. Right. So you get to find all like the little tiny pain points they have. Yeah, it's not usually that creepy. It's like just a little bit. I, I mean, a little. <laughs> I mean, you in some cases you develop rapport with your your users. And, right. You know, you make it comfortable for them. Right. They're coming in on their own time. Okay, but, I tried to do something like this when I was doing market research back in Texas. I, I did that for about three years. And that was the idea. We would sit people down at a computer and we would have a little like a checklist or write in boxes and things like that. And they would have to go to like a website or like a Rite Aid thing and say, okay, we want you to order three things. What three things would you order? And they would click on these boxes and they would put it in the cart and we would be like, all right, cash out, and then da da da. And then we would give them five bucks and send them on their merry way. And we would take different age groups, different minority groups you know different uh that's interesting social economical but what were you looking at well we were looking at whether or not the interface actually worked for people or if it was intuitive enough so if they could do the task yeah pretty much yep bingo oh, okay. that's, usability. yep you were doing usability you you can write on your resume now usability tester uh you you've done contextual task analyses Ooh, sounds fancy it does brainstorming I've done this. Best Have ever. you done this? Yeah, yeah. It's where Ew. you draw all the little bubbles. It's where you draw all the little bubbles that you're going to outline your paper, or your short story, or your project, and things like that. Your Venn diagram? Your Venn diagram in math or in other things. Right. Yeah. I mean, like brainstorming. Yeah. And I mean, 
everyone's probably heard of brainstorming. Right. Um, but I mean, there's there's a difference between like, let's get together and, and uh, think of some ideas versus like structured brainstorming, which is like, okay, we're thinking about going in these directions and here are some prompts that we will like give you to kind of branch off of that. So it's almost like anchored brainstorming in so a sense. So it's brainstorming with something you already have. Right. It's like we, you know, we're not going to come to you and be like, hey, we're thinking about building a website, but we don't know what yet. Uh, <laughs> so what what are you thinking? Like, what kind uh, of website? Let's, I, I, let's make a I'm website. I'm trying to go with muffinbutton.com now. Oh. Muffinbutton.com. Oh, you better patent it before uh, right? the show drops on Thursday. Exactly. So this um, is really cool because I I went to like a UX speakeasy meetup like a year or two ago. and it almost come shady. Bu- Do yeah, they, have like a, they have like a revolving... Like a little like, that, like you have to knock on the door or, or, or the guy slides language. in and says, "Say the password." Precisely, man. It's super exclusive. Oh, that's cool. Oh, no, no, so no, speak no. easy. Yeah, yeah but anyway, so it sounded like they they like brought together this brainstorming in a structured way. So we know that we need to solve this problem. But what they did is they brought in the uh, I'm going to butcher the name of this. We just talked about the characterettes. Sure, design charrettes. Design charrettes. That sounds like design Tourette's. Des- but <laughs> des- yeah, they brought in design charrettes because like you, f- you had to like try and solve the problem by like, drawing it five different ways. <laughs> oh, this was just a general meetup though. Just a bunch of people getting together. Yeah, we had gone. We went to this com- like a local company, and they it's like they host a like a meetup where they just talk about their usability processes and then walk you through how they actually do them. And oh, that is die. so <laughs> cool. Yeah, it was really cool. You drink beer and you have food. It's awesome. Design oh. Tourette's, guys. Design Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. By, any, oh, by the man. way, anybody who has Tourette's, we understand that it's a serious issue, and we're totally supportive of it. Oh, 110. They have designs for those. Yeah. So uh, we were just talking about brainstorming. Right. And that's that's a great story. Thank you for sharing that with us, Blake. That's cool. Like, I think structured brainstorming um, is good, and it's a good way. I, I don't typically use it. Uh, with users uh-huh. as much, I think it's a good like internal thing to do. Yeah, like as you're, if you're, especially if you're like a fresh team. Oh yeah, that's the way to fly. Oh, that's a team it building. Seems like exercise it's a good, yeah, team building exercise, and it doesn't seem like you would want to bring a lot of outside like general users. You'd want people in the know. Hey guys, because then it just goes all over the place. You know what is a good thing to bring outside users in for? What? what? Is it? Oh. Focus groups. Oh, look at how you did that. You're so topical. Oh, That's a man. great little segue. Focus. You can ride around on that. Ugh. All right, focus groups. <laughs> have you, you guys have heard of focus See, groups, Blake right? Blake still thinks I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. Segway. Yeah, 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 that was so good. You could ride around in it. That's yeah. a sly one. Anyway. Yeah. All right, so so I mean, I, did you do focus groups in your in your? Uh... Yeah, we used to do focus groups when I was doing market research, but we uh, we would set up like aisles of shopping stores. And then we would set up new devices. You know how, like, sometimes you have those little, like, pull tabs to get, like, medicine or pills out of a thing? Yeah. You would have a pull tab to pull it out and things like that. I tested those. Oh, okay. So we would get focus groups together of people who are different heights, weights, sizes, disabilities, things like that, and see how easy it was for them to get to the second, third, or, if need be, fourth story shelves. Hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that with focus groups, and we would have, like, different ages that we'd have to pick from. It was really difficult because we even had to get people of different disabilities and things like that off the streets. Oh, that is tough to do. Yeah, so I I can't say I've ever really used focus groups to its full potential. Like, I feel I, I, there's pros and cons to every method, right? Right. And that we, we should we should have marked those. But you mean it depends? Yeah, but it th- does depend. Yeah, this particular one though does have that stigma that comes with it. I it was going to ask you about it if you had done some stigma. before. Yeah, because in a focus group you end up with that scenario where the group loud, think. yeah, where the loudest voice is heard, and then everybody starts to agree with that. That yeah. person. Oh, that you mean stuff. the mob mentality thing. You get the Billy man. of the group who just is so over opinionated on everything. I'm just kidding, buddy. So I'm kidding. animated. I'm kidding, man. Oh, look at this guy. He wants to be the head of the show, but oh, oh. yeah, the, I'm taking over everything. Well, you, get, <laughs> you get the Nick of the group who, who is like. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Who who, That's who yells and screams and say, I don't like focus groups. And then you get the Blakes and Billys who are like, yeah, I don't like focus groups either. There well, it, it seems like the idea of it is, is that. Um, it seems like the idea of it is. Anyway, uh, focus groups seem to be more for public use, and you guys don't do a lot of things with public. D- do you? I don't know. We I use some Project. element of like uh, a focus group 
in both my jobs that I've had in human factors, and it's been kind of helpful, but you do run into, expe- like, especially in my, like, first job where it was where you're dealing with people of higher ranking and so then you get you get people in a room and they nobody even says anything except for the guy that's getting paid the most or has right the rank. I mean, see. yeah that's where you get into trouble right 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 yeah it focus groups are good when you sort of match the personalities and uh they all kind of gel well and so and they can all provide their unique input and like it's almost like you have to do research on your people before you put them into a focus group as like counterproductive as that sounds like we're talking about quick and dirty methods to like just get some feedback True, on your stuff. Yeah. but yeah like, it seems like this would be something that people would use more for like beta testing a new app or 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 a public service or something you along could those lines you definitely use it for it those seems like it's for yeah. more of that getting people off the street and stuff like that for sure i mean they're they're used in the same sense of like uh like like brainstorming is right. internally this is more of that external um, like, let me get your thoughts on this. Oh, okay. And yeah. and where where do you see like that seems potential. like it could go all over the place though. It really yeah. does. Yeah. All right. What's the next one? Heuristic evaluation. Ooh. Ooh. You know this one? Yes. Yes. I know about heuristics. Yes. We talked about this uh, episode design. Yeah. Long time well, ago. we've talked about heuristics a lot of times. I mean, heck, episode one. Hey, can I just address uh, our listeners really quick? Hey, whoever left us that review on iTunes, we fixed our audio. Uh, yeah. And we, we really appreciate you leaving us the review. But if the audio quality was what kept you from rating us five stars, we would really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Revisiting that review. We really and, do work hard for this. And if you're listening and want to help us out, go review us uh, on iTunes, wherever, podcast. Just review it. We love hearing what you guys have to, th- to say. Uh, just, we read it all. We do. Oh, we really do. We Make kind of agonize over it. Make it good. We don't agonize. <laughs> we you get agonize. Pop- we get little poppers out of the drawers every time someone reviews it and just pops them and get Yay. all excited. Yay. Okay. Somebody loves all right. us. Side note. We were talking about heuristic evaluation. Yeah. Designs, design episode. I only brought that up because the design episode was one of those episodes where our audio quality wasn't that great. Well, yeah. I was wondering where that came from. Yeah. I, it kind of seemed like left field. It was no. pre-Blake. It, <laughs> it was PB. 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 Pre Blake. Uh, heuristic valuation. Yeah, no, this is just going through and saying uh, this this shouldn't be a thing. This should be a thing based on yeah. the heuristics right. that you know are widely accepted in the field. Usually right. The, what do you, we usually use like all the near, Nielsen. I use Nielsen. Nielsen. Yeah. I, I use love Nielsen. doing heuristic reviews. It's They're the first fun. thing when you jump into a project, especially if you have a new set of people and all that kind of stuff. And there's an existing project or existing product. See, I, it's it's good to get a set of fresh eyes, but I often find myself like I my first thing that I love doing is just a contextual inquiry, like we talked about earlier. Like that, nothing. The amount of knowledge that I gain from that, as opposed to everything else, is just like so astronomically high when I go sit down and see what they do like that for me does it it um, seems like this kind of like uh, evaluation or methodology of uh, heuristic evaluation seems like it might be like something to do when you're about to upgrade a system or roll out a new version of a system or something like that this is like the preliminary version of a system I think would be the best time to use this right so you have like Okay, here's my working website. I just put here's it together. The rough draft. I just put it together. Go through, do a heuristic evaluation, and fix that low hanging fruit. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're looking for like glaring problems or anything mm-hmm. that's going to really just be a showstopper for you. Things you would think that were natural, but other people wouldn't necessarily get to. Yeah, and I mean, you, I don't know. This is kind of why I like doing this one first, just because it, it also makes me aware if I do get into a, te- a contextual inquiry that if I have any biases that I've brought with myself. When mm. I'm talking to a user, if they're like, no, you're actually kind of wrong or you're not looking at it the That's right fair. way. See, so. see, for me, it's like I don't – this is going to sound bad. I don't care as much about the interface as I do about what their, like, overall task is. So, yeah. like, I'm like, what is your goal? That's – and you know what goes good with contextual inquiries? Oh, man, I'm just full of the you're segues. Just wow. it. I'm just full of the segues. Right around and getting Steve it. Steve Wozniak right here, right around one the segues. One-on-one. One on one interviews. So this is why I like contextual inquiries so much is because you get that chance to talk to them one on one and say, you know, why are you doing what you're doing? What is your goal for this? What tasks do you have to perform to do your job or to do the task, whatever it is? Like these these are cool to me. This is well, this is like straight human factors gold. Yeah. This is like this is what ah. you do. 
th- you're 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 picking away at people, interviewing them, stuff like that. Like for example, if you were working in like the food industry, and you were talking to waiters about a um, I don't know a digital version of taking orders, how do you feel about it? Yes. How do you, what do you need in your job or a soldier yes. in the battlefield? What do you need to make your job easier when you're triaging patients and triaging or something. patients yeah. or something along those lines? Oh. Uh. You could so do that good. in hospitals too, too. Yeah, oh, that would be cool to actually do a one-on-one heuristic interview with like a nurse Ooh. at a hospital. Ooh, oh, that'd sure. be a great show format. You know, do that'd that cool. with a nurse at a hospital. You know, you know, we don't. She can be as upfront about it as she wants. She doesn't even have to tell us who she is. Just that she's a nurse, and she was like, "You know what? I hate. I hate it when the thing goes beep and not boop. You yeah. know, little things like that. You yeah. know. Sure. I mean, I, it would kind of suck because like. And what are you going to do about it? Well, we're going to put a podcast out there, and hopefully someone in the medical field hears it. <laughs> like, hey, you hey, never know, right? Hey, we yeah. got Talk fans. Right we got a community. Oh, we have a community. There is someone out there listening right now who's just pumping their fist and saying, I'm yes! with you. Yes! I'm with you. Uh, no, funny story about triage. Uh, so What? Is this that? <laughs> <laughs> Something that no, no one has ever said. So there I was, triaging people. <laughs> no, no, no. So so uh, this this poor guy like got his... I don't – this was when I went to the hospital the other day. This guy got um, something in his eyes, and he's, like, yelling and screaming, like, I'm never going to see you again. And, like, y- you know, causing a scene in the oh – And, like, I'm like, oh, okay, my, my my side hurts, but, I mean, like, treat that guy first. Like, <laughs> like, like, freaked and, out. like yeah. and so, like, I ended up waiting, like, three hours to get triaged in. And, you know, they were just so apologetic when, when I got back there. I was like, dude, no worries. Like, I understand how triage works. Like, yes, I'm in pain. And, yes, my appendix could have ruptured in the time that you had me wait. But it's fine. I understand that other people are, like, dying. You guys lose or, sight over here, yeah. Or, like, yeah. My, my, my roommate in uh, the hospital, he was using a table saw. And he didn't get his fingers caught in it. But table saws tend to kick back. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And it blew all of his fingers on his left hand back, like hyper extended them. Wow. And the doctor was able to fix his pinky, his ring finger, his index finger. He was able to half fix his thumb to where he can like oh, uh, contract it, but he can't extend it because of the ligament. So he's going to have to like physical therapy that thing. Oh yeah. And uh like and he his, can't give anybody the finger. He can't give anybody the middle finger because his bone was obliterated. Oh, that's bold. obliterated? Like they couldn't find it. So he's going to have to get a prosthetic wow. or amputated. And I'm just like, "Whoa. I'm sitting over there in pain and I'm like, well, at least I'm not that guy." So ah! I 100%. Mean, that's crazy. Like just be thankful for what you got, guys. Let's all Right I'm now saying. he's listening to the podcast and he just threw his iPod. He was like, no, never. Yeah, I'm not listening to these guys again. I'm going to learn how to use this thumb, no, and then I'm, I'm... going to text an angry message. No, I feel really bad for the guy. No, definitely. Um, yeah, but uh, anyway, that's my short story about triage. We were talking about interviews. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how did we stray so far? Well, you said segments. triage. I was like, oh, why man. are you Well, you were talking it? about interviewing nurses and triage. All right, uh, let's move on. Participatory design, and this is this is kind of like design charrettes. Although this is, what are you laughing about? Every time you say it, I'm like design charades. I'm all right, I'm thinking He's of got an application. Over your it's I'm, I'm real thinking bad. about guys. It. <laughs> I'm sorry. We should record us doing design charades as an episode. I would. <laughs> There's just like no audio. So bad. All right, first word sounds like cure. Cure. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> it might be ridiculous. All <laughs> right. <laughs> participatory design. All right. Participatory kind of like design. design shreds, although you're not including people on the inside. You are grabbing actual users and saying, okay, well, how would you fix this interface? This is like, you know, how, how do you get your users to get in and buy in on this product that you're creating? Like, okay, you know, it, it, this is this is really great with... I was seeing if I was jumping ahead. Paper prototyping, which we don't have in here. Why don't we have that in here? I think we talked about it in another episode, but paper prototyping. Let's bring that yeah, up. Yeah, we talked about that. Um, it's coming. Yeah. Oh, is it later? No, no, no. I okay. mean, we're going to talk right. about it. No, we will. Okay. So, no, no, no. This is great when you have like a paper prototype. I guess we can talk about it now. Paper well, prototyping we've is We've talked when... about this before yeah, we in have. design. It's like uh, when you have like just a paper version of what you're like a, what your product know, one is. of those rings, and it's just kind of like a flip book type. And you were talking about sticky notes yeah, earlier, yeah, yeah. and this is this is when the user can be like, mm, "Well, I would really like it if this button was over here," and they can actually pick it up and move it, and you know, participate in the design. Right, right, right. 
kind of like storyboarding an app. Uh, kind of, but this is more malleable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like you, the bringing the end user and stakeholders in there has gotten really big in the design process. Yeah. You're seeing companies like Google or any of those kind of big conglomerates now, but it's it's a big running topic to bring both your like your business end and then your customer end. In it's one. It, it's kind of a controversial topic too because a lot of people uh, say you know when you bring in your users, they don't know what's good for them, um, and you know they can't if you if. <laughs> There's an episode of The Simpsons where Homer, like, orders his dream car, and it has, has like, all these usability problems. Right. Uh, and so... He's coming. Yeah, he's, he's coming. It. Now it's his car, yeah. <laughs> no, and, uh, and, yeah, his car has all these usability problems because he designed it for himself. Right. Like, he's like, you know, I want, I want um, like, two seats and, like, a glass dome on each seat, and it just looks ridiculous. So there's the danger that if you let users design for themselves... They won't design it right, um, and that's that's the fear with participatory design. But but can't same thing be said if you don't actually use any users in your design that you're going to design an app that works for you? Well, absolutely, yeah. It's but just it's a matter of for, like it might not work for Blake or me. It's just a matter of yeah how you bring your users in, and I'm saying like for participatory design where your users are actually sitting in and saying no, this would be better here. That's the danger. Well, I think that's the biggest part of our job, right? Is so. There's the big talk of bringing users in and then different stakeholders, and that's running from, like, business leads, marketing people, right. developers, all that, trying to find the balance of, okay, how do I – Who we obviously know that we can't let them all design for themselves. That's what we're supposed to be there for, but how do you find the correct balance of right. it all? Right, right. It's like, you know, some users will go move this sticky note up here, and you'll be like, oh, honey, that's – that's not going to work. Why don't you just work. put it in the middle of the page so I can just see it when I click on it right away? Right, yeah. Uh, some people will do that and be like, well, the marketing department wants that for something. New. Yeah. And they, or it's always a balance. Like it's, it's always a balance. And yeah. so you got to like, especially with, you know, big big teams on product software, they they want things their way. And then it's always a constant battle of like, but users need it this way. And yeah, okay. that's, that's the fight of the human factors people. All right. Next one. Okay, you're ready to move on. Well, no, I mean, I get it. I <laughs> mean, the per- participating. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Billy I is done that. with participating uh, in this design. Get. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> this, forget it. Uh, no, but I mean, like, I get the idea of the dis- participatory. Words are hard. It's okay. Participatory design. There you go. Yeah. No, I understand it completely. I mean, like, I get it. Like, people come in and things like that. And then some people, it's like, what does Joe Schmo really know? Because you guys are pioneering a thing that might not actually even exist until you make it. Oh, well, th- yeah, that's a whole other thing, that's right? True. Like, trying to design something that doesn't even exist. Yep. yep. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Like, And that's why people go through so many versions of it. And, you know, that's also probably why you do the next topic, which are surveys. See, I can do oh, it, too. Oh, segue. I can do it as well. Beep, beep. Oh, man. I feel like playing the John Cena clip, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, go, go, so inappropriate. Go, go. Okay. Go. Surveys. Surveys. Oh, man. We're Appendectomy. A show. Appendectomy. All right. Uh, I'm just going to blame everything on that. <laughs> there it is. You're going to blame me on the appendectomy, too? <laughs> <laughs> Sympathy <I'm sorry>. pains. <laughs> All right. So surveys. Uh, uh, by far the quickest and the dirtiest. Ooh yeah. So dirty. So quick. Just hey some of the everybody. Best stuff do you want to get some surveys going? Uh, oh yeah. Surveys are probably like my second favorite next to contextual inquiry because it's like contextual inquiry and interviews are that really personable one on one. But if you want like vast amounts of data of the majority of your users surveys are the best way to just i just need answers to a couple questions just here you go and launch it and get access to like hundreds of thousands depending on your your user base of responses and be able to analyze that and say oh this is what they need yeah that's one of those if you're in a like in a big company with a lot of users that is just perfect because i mean you can get a high rate of people just disregarding it but still just sheer volume of people don't yeah. they use this a lot of surveys in um, everything? Yep. Like Facebook uses it a lot. Yep. You Facebook. Know? They always look at your patterns and what you're clicking on and yeah, where you're like, going. Yeah, e-commerce is really big into it too. Every time I do something on Amazon or Newegg, like they stop me halfway through and they're like, "Hey, how you doing?" It's, yeah, it's, I mean it's cool and, and it works, and I like to do. I always fill out the surveys. I do too I because I person, yeah. yeah because I know what it's like on the other side and be like. 
Why didn't they just fill it out? Marketing departments use this a lot too, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. That's how yeah. they, I mean, they use it without even us knowing about it. Like, I've noticed that a lot of websites I go to actually bring up things that I actually want to see in their advertisements. You know, things I've actually gone to Amazon to look at. And it's like, oh, by the way, did you also see these things? Oh, yeah. It's that personalization. As long yeah, as yeah. we're talking about this, one of the one of the strategies that I've employed is to sort of attach your uh, human factors survey, whatever it is, like just a couple questions onto whatever marketing survey they send out. Because they're going to send that sucker out to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Um, and There's s- even apps you can download that will pay you for them. And so, yeah. Cool, cool. talk. Uh, yeah, and so so attaching those human factors questions onto there are priceless because you get like it's so much easier to send out a marketing survey and so if you just look like hey can you just a couple questions here like oftentimes you know the human factors folk don't have the resources to send it out Very uh, true. but the marketing department is just a machine depending on the company of course right but i mean still like, they're like getting they're if anybody's gonna get the resources it's them yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah just toss a couple questions in there and get a couple answers here and there Mm-hmm. Well, they send them out. It's a great, great opportunity. Um, you want to, you want to try to segue this next one? No, uh, no, well, no. I want to pass it on. I want to see Blake, Blake segue yeah, this. Blake, All right. Let's do so, this, Blake. So surveys and two. So after you do a survey, you collect the data and then you help you help design your usability test. Okay. Oh, okay. That'll work. All right. Yeah, All right. Right. No, right here. I'm still gonna give it to where credit is. All new. right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go for that. I mean, you're you're rookie league. You're see, not up here with Blake, us, what, but you what, can get there. Super what, soft. What I would have done, man, <laughs> is like, you know what's another good context to use surveys in? What's that? Usability testing. I should know. Oh! That. oh! If, we, if our mics weren't so expensive, we'd drop them right now. Is there any way that like I can get a crown of just segways? <laughs> I'm the segway king over here. I think that um, could be arranged. Oh, yeah. I wonder this if they even make micro machine segways. <laughs> oh my god, this needs to be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> little wind up ones like we used to have with oh, little cars. End up with something in the mail. <laughs> Welded together. Oh yes, if you are a, <laughs> a metal worker or something and want to send us a crown of a segways, cr- a segway crown, <laughs> please email us and we'll send you back an address. Uh, <laughs> The usability of actual segways, though. Oh, man. That's, That's an, episode. an episode. All right. You could go rent segways. Uh, yeah, research. Oh, obviously. Yeah. Re- tax write-off Do right one of there. those tours. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Balboa. All right. So usability testing. Right. Uh, I love this one. The mecca of I mean, it is kind of your thing. Yeah. Like usability testing. All right. Let's do it uh, as often Next anymore. one. Quality assurance. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moving on. No. Right. Usability, usability testing. We've talked about this a lot in the yeah, past. We've we really mentioned do. this on a lot of episodes. Uh, if you still don't know what usability testing is. You can see, look at our other episodes. Go back, listen to our episodes. We'll we'll briefly glance over it on this one. Um, but I want to hear about your experience usability testing, Blake. Like what, what kind of... Uh, methods metrics and more do you employ while you are usability testing so this is really cool because i mean it's a build of all the quick and dirty things you do right, right. so you use surveys to understand the, the population you've got out there contextual inquiry to go actually interact with them and something you had mentioned earlier and this is where i had the most usability testing experience was using a disabled population Ooh. so like really trying to figure out okay how am i going to recruit participants because this will i did it's a, a study challenge. with um Wait, are we actually talking actual disability people? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, people that had low vision, so we were designing um, screen readers for tablets that would make it easier for people to have, like, a, I can't remember the acuity level, but really bad vision and can't read. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, so, and that was what we were doing, was walking them through separate tasks in, a, in like, a lab setting, watching them from behind the mirror, and uh-huh. then, like, having them do think aloud protocols, and then at the end, like, having them fill out surveys and all those kind of the things. The creepiest part of that is they can't see you watching them. Oh, I know. It's awful. Uh, you did the same thing with that with... Uh, uh, the soundscapes. Yeah, the yeah. soundscapes that you talked about I before in previous episodes. I forgot what episode that was in, but uh, that's a good tie three. back. No, uh, no, no. It was... It was two because three was computers as social actors. Oh, you remembered this time. I did All this right. time. I'll Ooh. never no, forget yeah, it now. Yeah, go dig through those. Those are that was a good that was a cool project. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. All right, so usability testing. Yeah, it's oh, it's the it's the everything. It's the bee's knees. Yeah, just get your users to test your thing. That's all you need to know. Mm-hmm. Quality assurance testing. What's the difference between usability testing and quality assurance testing? I thought Billy was asking the questions here. Yeah. Oh, 
yeah, what's that all about? Why are you taking oh, my job I'm so, away, I'm man? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Gosh, look at him slowly no, edging I'm, me out of the show here. Yeah, all right. Next week on Human Appendectomy. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, it's going to be me, Blake, and the Appendectomy. This week on the show, I'm your host, Nick Rome, and Blake Arnstorff's over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still sitting right here. <laughs> on the show today, <laughs> we're ignoring Billy completely. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Oh, man. We have so, too much fun in this uh, one. Quality Obviously. assurance <laughs> testing. Quality assurance testing seems if, like, not necessarily whether or not the app works, but more along the lines of if the app crashes or that's doesn't good, do what it's not supposed to do. That is real good. I like that. That's good. I yeah. like it. I like it enough to move on because we are running out of time. <laughs> oh, are we now? All right. Yeah. We're, these are fun. These We're are laying fun. down yeah. real logic it's like, here, though. It's like we've only talked about the methods and the metrics are going to have to get, like, the shaft almost. But, well, uh, I mean, like some bit. of these things are just their own even show. It seems like it really least. is. Oh, you could expand just about all of them, right? Yeah, yeah, really. Mm-hmm. Like Ooh, said, let's do a whole show on surveys. Whoa, no. <laughs> survey design. Ooh. Oh, oh, there's a really cool. great. Yeah. There's a no. There's a great book by Dillman. Um, he's a professor at Washington State University. That um, it's all in survey design. Uh, yeah, it's all about surveys in like multimedia, like distributing them. And, and, like, what the effective methods are. Like, so I had to do uh, a study where we were trying to get a lot of um, sort of a, a high response rate in a situation where response rate probably wasn't going to be optimal just because of the nature of the study. Like, we had to go into people's homes and install these. Ener- <laughs> Hang on. We had to go into these people's homes and install these energy monitors. Uh-huh. Um, oh. And so, uh, you know, it, it was like – that's hard to sign off on. And so when yeah, you right. when you personalize surveys, when you like hand write them, when oh, you have wow. when you have undergrads hand write them, um, which I was at the time. Oh, yeah. Handwritten survey. 2000 handwritten surveys. Well, you would have yeah. to actually you would or probably... I guess like sorry, 2000 handwritten like addresses. Like that's that's personalized. Uh, so okay. when you when you get something in the mail and you see it's handwritten, you're more likely to open it and actually pay okay, attention I'm to like it. Okay, I'm like thinking about the survey. No, no, no. This and then tricking people. Scribble that's this thing. that's getting response rate and then there's actually the survey design itself. Like how do you get it down to one page because people are more likely to fill out one page rather yeah. than two and like how do you organize it on the page? It's a really good book. Um Nice. That's well, that really makes cool. sense. I mean, he would have to take a lot of users into account when writing that thing, you know. He would yeah. have to have user experience modeling. Oh. Ah, do that. King. Bird. I mean, I mean kind of. Yeah. You got keystroke level modeling. That's So do, oh, that's that's, oh, that's so cool. Keystroke level modeling. That's What's awesome. Keystroke mo- level that's a uh, that's basically when you take like Billy, how long does it take you to tap this button? Not 0.5 seconds. Yeah. Okay. How long does it take you to tap five buttons? Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. How long does it take you to do that? Look to the screen. Or, or sorry, how long does it take you to look to the screen? Okay, like 0.5 seconds. How long does it take you to process that information? Maybe a second. Mm-hmm. You put together all the tasks and then model how long it will take somebody to perform this task and like what tasks can you cut down on? Like, is there a way I can automate this task so they don't have to think about this decision? Is there a way to automate, you know, putting in this data so they don't have to manually do it and save them some time there? Or on the other side of it, make sure that they do do it every time. Right, exactly. Like, like, uh, MMOs. Explain. Well, I mean, in MMOs, and this is all for the nerd people, but usually you have a set of moves that you always do. You're talking about rotations? Your rotations, your one, two, th- you know, usually it's set up on your number keypad or your controller buttons and everything like oh, yeah. that. Plus, like, in boss fights and things like that, they'll give you, like, little warnings that something's about to happen and you got to get out of the way or get farther away or get closer to or something along those lines. I, I would be really interested to see, like, the iterations of something like that. You know, That'd like, cool. in a boss fight, how, like, what? It's just too many keystrokes and just this is impossible. Right. Well, they measure it in actions per minute, so they don't actually yeah. measure it in keystroke. They do actions per minute. So, like, how many, uh, like, like any study on video games will take a look at, like, like StarCraft players. They'll right. do They'll measure actions per minute. So, like, some of these pro players are doing, like, 230 actions per minute. Oh, it's insane. My. Yeah, I mean, like, you would take that into consideration when designing certain things. One, to not make it super easy, but or not to make it super hard. And you would also have to put in rules to make sure that people can't automate it through making their own unique commands or macros and doing it, right? Right. Oh, right. uh, yeah, there comes my diploma. It's okay. in the mail. Got him. Let's, let's go on to the next. We got to get on to the metrics. Okay, Seriously. metrics. 
Yes, this next question is you, Billy. What metrics do you prefer to collect? That's too far. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We put these notes together for a reason. What method do you guys use most frequently on your projects? So I thought this would be kind of cool, and I don't know if this is how you intended it, Nick, <laughs> but to kind of throw it out to people that listen to it. Because I know we got some yeah. people that are like human factors professionals. Yeah, they're interested. They're me. dabbling in the arts uh-huh. of yeah. witchcraft. So holler at us. Knew it. Out. Yeah. Oh, it's okay when you make the warlock jokes. Yes, <laughs> because I am a warlock. <laughs> I will turn you into a newt. A level 100 <laughs> warlock. And I will do a one-on-one right. interview on how it is. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, do you like being a newt? Um, so, yeah. So, I well, I mean, like, I kind of covered it before. I like, I love, uh, you know, my contextual inquiry, my interviews, and my surveys. Uh-huh. And usability testing. Those are, like, my bread and butter. Those yeah. are what I pr- tend to use. What about you, Blake? Yeah, I really like, because I'm having to do it a lot now, and I've forgotten how much I loved it, is just straight-up task analysis. Like, oh. really understanding at a high level what's going on and then breaking it down, almost not completely to a keystroke level model, but we not a couple steps in here? up. You did, contextual task analysis. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. we did. Okay, cool. I yeah. was paying attention. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't mention. Sticky well, you notes already in them, did but... pay attention. That's why you're in the positions that you guys are in oh, our sure, scientists. Yeah. I think we skipped it though, didn't we? No, we didn't. Skip two. Task contextual, contextual task, task analysis. Did no. we talk about that? Uh, we went to contextual inquiry for some reason over <laughs> over task analysis. But you know, I mean, it's. Oh man. Well, let's talk about task analysis. Uh, Oh, I see. Because uh, we're talking about it now. Yeah, yeah, right. So what do you do for task analysis? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're professionals. A hundred percent. It's okay, Billy. You're not the only one who glances over show notes sometimes. <laughs> hey, I read these show notes. <laughs> All right. Go on. <laughs> Contextual task, task analysis. analysis. <laughs> Appendectomy. Appendectomy. Yeah, so this is just basically breaking down what people do in their work context. And so for me, it's just going through and getting high level tasks of what your goals are throughout a system and mm-hmm. then breaking them down into the sub processes and sub task goals. Like what kind of context are you doing within these goals and like how do you what tasks, what decisions do you have to make? Those how, are all and how long do you have to do any of this? Right. Is it feasible for you to be satisfied if we keep you on the phone for a long time? Those right. Right. Yeah, task analysis. Yeah, just analyzing what tasks they have to do. I hate to glance over it because it's. We should do a whole episode on it. I mean, yeah, yeah. and workflows. In, in, that's in the whole thing. Oh, workflows. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's next? All right. So let's see. Design flaws seem to be seem easy to detect. So why do you, you collect so. the metrics? I mean, if someone doesn't understand how an app works, or they keep pushing on the wrong button when you're designing it. So that's like the really important part, right? Because I don't know, I don't know how to say this the best, but sometimes when you're stuck looking at a problem the same way with the same people all the time, you start overlooking big details. Well, yeah, but don't you guys go on a lot of patterns? I mean, as scientists, you always are like, like I always notice, like the menu button is always on the left hand side. You know, consistencies and standards. Yeah, you guys work on those sort of things. So why wouldn't it just be a cookie cutter type of thing? Well, a good wi- a good thing about metrics is, hey, Billy, you know, what's the motto of the show? It depends. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's your answer. No, I was actually really wondering this. Why can't you just design the app the same way as the other app? If you were trying to make another version of Twitter, why don't you just design it like Twitter? You just said it. It depends. It depends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, it depends on the goal, yeah, right? It depends if you just on redesign Twitter the same thing. What would you get out of it? Yeah. Well, I mean, we do that with houses all the time. This is like. The house that we're currently in, there's four of these houses on the block. These exact same houses. It works. Sure. Yeah. It. But Twitter's exactly the same for all of its users, if you're using that analogy. Well, like, yeah, I, I access like, the same Twitter as you. Right, right. But I meant, like, the idea That's of just it is me is buying the same house a, as you. Yeah, if you wanted to make a work version of Twitter for some reason, like, I don't know why, but if you wanted to make, like, a version of Twitter that people can use at offices, wouldn't you just use the same, like frame as twitter does that make sense maybe i mean it depends on what you want to get out of it though right it's defining the goals of who's going to actually use it because if you're just like replicating the same thing over and over i understand like being consistent in placement or iconology those kinds of things right. but if you you don't just want to do like copy and paste and that's it because what what difference does that give you i don't know that's the question like why wouldn't you just do it if it's just if it works you know what i mean like it seems it would take out a lot of the time. I, I'm sorry, I'm going too much into it. But I was at when I was reading the show notes, like I do all the you time. You read 
the show notes. I read I know. the show notes. Um, it's okay, I do too When I was sometimes. doing it, that was the one thing that actually came up. I understand that you guys do, like, you know, you believe in consistency, but why don't you just make all web pages the same? Well, that'd be boring. Yeah. Yeah, but we would all, but no one would get confused when going to a web page or. But would like, they go visit them if they were all the same? Well, we go to web pages either for a service or for information. So if we know how to get all the information off of a website, because we, it's just like Not the other ones. It's like IMDb. Everyone goes to IMDb because yeah, but I all the pages are the same. To get any information. Hey, Billy, I go to like, look you, at dopamine colors. Do you have an opinion on something? Just yes. anything. Yeah, I have I'm an old. opinion. I have an opinion on You've something. You've known me for a few years. You you know I have a lot of opinions. Yeah. And and that's the reason why there's differences. Okay. So you guys are going also trying to not only just do something that works but also trying to perfect or change something to represent it. Or Blake over here says, "I don't like it that way. I think, you know, it should it would be better doing it this way." And it might be. Uh and so we're going to do it Blake's way cuz Blake's the boss or, you know, that's what, a scary notion. Or it's his <laughs> style. <laughs> Or it's a matter of style, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, and you get the designers in there who are like, no, I really want this to look good. Um, and, you know, good designers will say, I understand. I can make it look good, and I'll work with you to make it usable, too. That's what that's the mark of a good designer. Okay. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that was actually a real question that I had about it. Yeah, no, good question. All right, where were we? Uh, oh, we were still yeah. talking about it. Uh, we were on metrics help estimate the size or magnitude of a design problem. In turn, this provides us with how the user is impacted and severity well, of the Why issue. don't you just read all the show notes verbatim? Let's <laughs> well, not, I, I, let's I mean, not even I, have a conversation about it. Just take it away, Billy. I, no, I thought that's where we were. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's totally where we are. Okay, yeah. so it's the real question is why do we even collect metrics? I mean, we, we had mentioned earlier that shouldn't you just be able to spot these problems? But obviously right. you can't. Right, right. Uh, so the biggest one or the one that I've learned over the past couple of years, especially that's important, is when you're presenting it to stakeholders for a reason to make the change that you want to make. Like yeah. something on the they UI. The reason. Yeah. Like if there's something in your UI or in the process or whatever it may be that really needs to make a change, but it might be costly. Right. Um, having those like concrete numbers, like such as we'll, we'll get to these in a second, but like yeah. time on task, if it's just taking people too long to finish their task, well, you can like demonstrate that. Let's talk about those now. So we're talking about performance based metrics, right? Right. So that would be like what Blake just mentioned, time on task, uh, whether or not they were successful doing the task. So task uh -huh. success rate, um, you have errors, how many errors they made while performing the task efficiency, like how, you know, how, how much, effort did they require to do the task um what what uh what metric do you use for that blake for efficiency yeah ah uh, you know that's really a good one yeah it's it's tough right so these things are kind of like the idea of like tools in your toolbox you yep. use different things for di solving different problems or like. if you can chuck them all in there if that makes sense at the time yeah Just but that might not be cost effective for time it might not be but you can automate a lot of the stuff that we're capturing here, too. Right, I yeah. You. Like you. One, you're, it's not like you're sitting there clicking buttons. Like the ones right. I always try to grab, time on task, errors. These are really easy to grab. Uh -huh. You know, misclicks. Yeah. Those are they're, they're super easy to grab. Um, and whether or not they finish the task, that's... That's probably the biggest one, right? Yeah. Let's talk about issue-based metrics. Okay. Let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> so this is getting it when people... It's kind of in your like in your focus groups, right? Like if you're talking about across some UI that people are having the same problem over and over and over. It's like documenting that they can't find their the way to sign off or they can't find how to get to this specific part of a web page. Just kind of like documenting an overall issue that happens across a lot of people. Right. These are like common themes that, that show up um, in whatever design you're working on. Okay. Man, I'm sorry. Appendectomy. My energy is going down. But okay. It's okay because this next part I'm like super jazzed about. Uh -oh. I, lo I love self-report metrics. Do I, you really? Yeah, because that's like... Self-report metrics? Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's when the user says this, this, or this. And there's there's a lot of... Uh, like, I love them, but I also... I have this love-hate relationship with them because they're, they're... Some can argue that they're meaningless, and then some... <laughs> yeah, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't either. I think I any, I think any yeah. feedback is valuable. And I think this is a good... I, the reason I love these metrics is because it's a good way to quantify. It's it's very easy to see at a glance. Oh, well, they're having problems. Yeah. They're having problems. Like, 
the first one I have on here is uh, the single ease question, and that's just how easy or difficult. I forget the exact phrasing of it, but it's like how. Uh, what was the difficulty of completing this task? And if they say it was hard, but they were able to do it, you know, you look at those in conjunction and say they're able to complete this, but it's taken a lot out of them. Or you know, easy and they don't even complete the task. So they think they're completing the task, but they they think it's like so easy that they're just not getting through it. So this opens up your eyes to a lot of things. Well, I mean, without any self-report metrics, I think you run into problems how you interpret the data. Because, I mean, when you're looking at time on task or lostness scores, having these self-report issues of like, okay, on task one, like you said, it was hard, right. but they finished it. Yes. Okay, was it taking a lot of time, though? Lost All right, miss, so did you say lost miss scores? Lostness scores. Lostness. That's not a word. Come on, guys. You're scientists. But it's an actual <laughs> metric. It is? Yeah. Okay. What is it? <laughs> so you de- you develop the optimal path. That somebody You're making to- words up now. No, I'm not. <laughs> Scientists a, can do that. It's in a Tolson Hour <laughs> book. I can ch- cite the chapter for you. It's chapter wow. four. Uh, chapter oh. four? Yeah. Whoa, now. <laughs> yeah, those logic weird. bombs he's dropping. <laughs> Woo. Told you, man. Okay, no, sorry. What's the lostness score? Though? So you define an optimal path to get through a task, and it's each deviation that somebody takes that's a level of lostness. Oh, I get it. So if someone wants to actually like one click buy on Amazon, but they can't do it. Yeah. The rat is going down the maze, and they make a left instead of a right. That's right. minus one. Okay, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Uh, and the the human user in this case is the rat. Do you rat. oftentimes compare humans to rats? No. <laughs> No, I'm just... Well, we study their mis- learning models. So. Oh, Why wow. Not? <laughs> no, wow. never. Wow. Uh, system usability scale. Billy, have you heard of this one? Seuss, system usability? Seuss. Seuss usability? Sus. <laughs> I, system level? Sus. No, I call it, I call it the sus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the system usability scale. No. Yeah. No. This one's cool. Um, this one is... I, I hear negative things about this, but I also hear that... Yeah. Like, I've, I've heard both sides. This is the quickest... The dirtiest, easiest, I guess, way to yeah. sort of get a ballpark estimate of where your system is. And it provides, like, a good percentage score, too, right? Like, it's a it's an easy thing to look at. Yeah. Like, okay, if you're above the 70% threshold, you're not failing. Right. Now, the danger is saying, I'm above 70%, I'm good. Yeah. But, you know, and, and the danger is also saying, this is everything I need. Uh, and that's, you know, it, it, it's not comprehensive. So this system usability scale is basically ten? how well ten points of how well it is. It's ten questions uh-huh. that says like I needed a lot of help to complete the tasks in this program or website or whatever it is. I think I would need the help of a technical person, and they're like strongly agree to strongly disagree, and they answer this on a one to five Likert scale, and um, you know you you aggregate the score at the end of it and weight them all uh, accordingly. And you arrive at the score, a percentile score uh, from zero to 100 at the very end that tells you basically how well whatever it is you're evaluating did. Okay. We used to do the same thing when we were in college with teachers once a year. Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Like once a year during the semesters, you would always get that thing of like, how am, how is my teaching? I've those, never equated the oh, two, and that is actually those pretty are, good. Yeah, That's those a are really bittersweet, too. Okay. Oh, so it's the same concept. Yeah. All right. All right. We, should, all we right. should just do a whole episode where we read our feedback, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Wasn't that supposed to be like a... Uh... Mr. Rome is super chill. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one once. <laughs> Did you actually do class? Were you a TA? Oh, I was. Yeah. Oh, God. Teaching's fun. It was. Right. I love teaching. It's rewarding. Um, all right. Questionnaire for user satisfaction. What is this one, Blake? I've, I've not heard of this one. So this one just kind of came up when I looked up SUS, too, and I hadn't really heard of the other two. Quiz. But it was it was just they were more intensive versions of oh, it. Oh, okay. So, like, with this one has 27 questions, and again, with, like, a 10-point rating scale, whereas this computer system usability questionnaire. Or CSUC for short. <laughs> This is a family show. Hey, that's the acronym, <laughs> CSUC. I don't know. I wanted to at least throw some other options out there because I've right. always traditionally used SUS. And I, I have mean, too. I think there this like just a number of sheer the sheer number of questions is why because it's something simple to throw on at the end of like your interview questions yeah. or end of the super first easy. Survey. Nice. Super well, easy, it, super quick, it really super does, This quiz thing actually seems like it would be, it, since it is a more in-depth version of SUS, look at me doing all the lingo. Oh, man. This Throwing quiz out thing, acronyms like a this boss. This quiz thing seems like it would be more like 
rating something that deals with sensitive information, like, yeah. you know, bank accounts, investment firms, things like that. You would probably want these kind of questionnaires on more in-depth because it deals with such delicate information. Yeah, and maybe the, even to that point, if you're dealing with more, like, intense information, maybe you have a bigger user base because that's the important part about both the, the quiz and the Q-suck is you need a, <laughs> a big sample size Q-suck. for the mean anything. All right. That sounds like a like a radio call sign. Okay. You're listening to CSUQ. Q suck. I don't think any Diego. radio station wants to be known as suck. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I think that's got to be it, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, and on that note on, we're done. On the C suck. <laughs> well, Thank you for listening to CQ. <laughs> CSUQ. I want to know what our listeners think. What do you guys think? Did we miss a method that you guys want to hear about? If there's one that you prefer to use, let us know in the comments or send us an email at humanfactorscast at gmail.com. If you want to be featured on our show, uh, like a non e mouse, Mr. Mouse, Hi. yeah, we're all over social media. Go ahead and comment on our SoundCloud, Facebook. We're all over social media. Humanfactorscast at gmail.com. All your questions. If you like what we're doing, you can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash humanfactorscast. Sure to like, subscribe, review us on iTunes, whatever your favorite podcast directory is. We're always trying to keep in touch with interesting topics that you guys, our listeners, want to hear about on the show. So feel free to use the force. <laughs> I know. Look at him. Go. I have, I have, uh, I have the notes in here from last week. Blake Arnstorff, where can they find you? <laughs> you can find me at UX Chill Bro on Twitter. And Billy Hall, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter or on YouTube at Comstar Cleric. As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter at Nick underscore Rome. Thanks again for tuning into Human Factors Cast. Until next time, guys. It depends! depends!